Atlassian, the vendor that makes the Jira Service Desk solution, was a fairly unknown company until they went public recently. They're now a $3.3 billion company with uh, over 800 employees. And at last official count, there were more than 43,000 organizations, including 80 of the top Fortune 100 that were using Atlassian software, including Citigroup and eBay and Coca-Cola and Tesla and NASA. We like to joke and say that Atlassian is the biggest software company you've never heard of. So the Atlassian solution is a purpose-built suite of software that's modularized for ease of use and flexibility, but then combined make up a well-thought-out solution that can support your organization from DevOps to IT service management. The various pieces of the Atlassian solution, such as Jira Software, and Confluence, and HipChat, and Bitbucket, and Bamboo, and Jira Service Desk, combine to make a full end-to-end -end solution to support the application lifecycle. So in today's session, we're going to be focused on the Jira Service Desk piece of that solution, but I'll also mention a few other integrated pieces of their solutions, as, such as HipChat and Confluence, as we go along. So teams of all shapes and sizes have transformed the way they deliver IT using Jira Service Desk to give their customers the best service experience. In fact, just since it launched three years ago, there are more than 20,000 teams using Jira Service Desk now. These are small and medium-sized teams all the way up to larger enterprise teams. One thing really sets Jira Service Desk apart from the competition, and that's their mission to provide an effortless user experience. Simplicity is really key in their design. And everyone loves how easy it is to set up and use Jira Service Desk. In, in fact, the uh, independent reviewers have rated Jira Service Desk not only easiest to use, but also shortest time to set up and easiest to maintain among similar solutions. So Jira Service Desk is a purpose built is purpose built for IT and service teams, and then provides your teams with everything they need right out of the box, including incident, change, problem management, and service requests. It lets you give your customers an easy way to ask for help while your agents resolve incidents faster than ever. Now, Jira Service Desk can scale to meet the growing needs of IT service management, enabling teams, IT teams, to deliver world class service to their customers. So what about ITIL? Can Jira Service Desk support the ITIL needs of my organization? You bet it can. As many of you already know, ITIL is the gold standard for IT teams around the world. It's an integrated set of best practice processes for delivering IT services to customers. ITIL's primary objective is maximizing value to the business by aligning IT resources with business needs. So many Atlassian customers are adopting Jira Service Desk to address, to address their uh, organization's ITIL needs. It's super flexible because it leverages the power of Jira and also offers an excellent starting point where IT teams can adopt best practices right out of the box. So Atlassian knew that ITIL was important to their customers, so they were very happy to announce that recently Jira Service Desk has been ITIL certified. They achieved ITIL certification from both Pink Verify and Axelos for the ITIL processes of fulfill, excuse me, request fulfillment, incident management, problem management, and change management. So to attain an ITIL certification, a software vendor has to satisfy 100% of the mandatory criteria for the process being verified. And Jira Service Desk was assessed against ITIL compatible product features and terminologies and workflow and functional requirements and other criteria. And the ITIL certification then is a reassurance that the product is going to be capable of supporting your ITIL processes. But Jira Service Desk stands above the other vendors in the ITSM market because of its ability to uh, adapt and uh, and and uh, the adaptability in, in, in being able to implement and streamline support processes. It, it really offers a, a path to lean ITIL and ITSM. So I wanted to take a quick, closer look at each of these four processes to understand how Jira Service Desk supports ITIL. So service request fulfillment. So we all know IT receives a wide variety of requests from customers, and they can include simple requests for support or a new mobile device or software installation. 
It's really the size and frequency and low risk nature of these types of requests that means they're more appropriately handled by a separate process rather than alongside incidents or the change management process. So ITIL defines this process to handle these types of requests as request fulfillment. And Jira Service Desk can provide a fast and efficient way to implement an ITIL based service catalog for your customers. It provides a best practice ITIL workflow that's needed to support requests which require approval, and then another workflow for those that don't need approvals. The uh, self-service customer portal makes it easier for customers to request help and track progress on their issues. And then when you add the Atlassian collaboration solu solution known as Confluence, Jira Service Desk makes it super simple to add a searchable knowledge base to your request process to deliver even greater value. In fact, when used as a knowledge base, Confluence has been shown to deflect up to 45% of incoming issues. So our next process is incident management. Now the service desk team provides first line response for incidents as they provide a single point of contact for customer communications with IT. And, and according to ITIL, the aim of incident management is to restore the disruption of any service uh, as quickly as possible. And that would include monitoring for any conditions that have the potential to result in a reduced um, quality of service. And Jira Service Desk provides for that the best practice ITIL workflows and fields for IT to streamline their process for major, uh, to resolve major incidents. When you combine the power of dynamic queues in Jira Service Desk and collaboration and proactive SLAs, you, you really have a service desk that empowers IT to resolve incidents very quickly. Our third process that we're uh, Jira Service Desk is ITIL certified for is problem management. So while incident management is all about finding the shortest path to restoration of normal service, problem management on the other hand is all about finding the underlying causes of those incidents and the best resolution and prevention of future ones. The aim of pro problem management is really to reduce the adverse effect of incidents that are caused by errors within the IT infrastructure and then prevent recurrence of incidents related to those errors. And Jira Service Desk provides a great path for IT, uh, IT teams to implement problem management and make it a logical extension of their incident management process. And finally, we have change management. Every IT organization you know, faces the challenges of managing constantly changing IT infrastructure. So ITIL provides a set of best practices for change management that makes it easier for IT teams to prioritize and manage changes efficiently while trying to minimize the impact and risk to the business of those changes. So change management specifically is the process designed to understand and minimize these risks while making the changes that IT needs to make to critical systems and, and services. Jira Service Desk offers a streamlined path to ITIL change management, which provides a standardized approach for prioritizing and responding to requests for change while reducing failed changes and service disruption, defects and rework and things like that. And the Jira Service Desk leverages a collaboration to make it easier for IT teams to plan and review and implement changes. HipChat is one of the integrated solutions uh, that provides a lot of that collaboration uh, functionality. IT teams can also leverage team calendars for Confluence. It's the Alassian collaboration solution for calendars within conference, Confluence uh, to use as the ITIL forward schedule of changes in order to plan and coordinate the appropriate time for to implement a change. And another great feature that makes Jira Service Desk uh, really easy to use for IT teams is the ability to link change requests with software releases over in the software development side of the house to create complete visibility between the uh, ITSM teams and the, and the uh, DevOps teams. So I'd like to move now to a live demonstration of the Jira Service Desk Suite. And again, just wanted to mention, feel free to enter any questions you have in the Q&A box, and we'll have some time at the end uh, here to address them. So I'm going to change our view now over to my demo system. So first thing I wanted to do was set the stage for the role I'll be acting as today. There are really two roles in Jira Service Desk. One is the role of the customer. And the customer interacts through this, with the system through a separate URL to the customer portal. And they're allowed to do three things in the customer portal. They're allowed to search knowledge, which hopefully will 
deflect uh, them submitting new issues. They're allowed to submit new issues, and then they're able to find existing issues uh, that they've submitted and update them. Agents are the other role in the system as opposed to customers. And agents are the people in the system that can do anything else. They are able to open tickets for other people. They can transition tickets along their life cycle. They can resolve those issues. They can collaborate with backline and create knowledge base articles and so on and so forth. So today I wanted to start uh, with the customer perspective here in the portal and we'll look around the customer portal and then I wanted to toggle over to the agent view at a separate URL that the agents access the system and we'll we'll uh, look at the agent view and then find these issues I've submitted as a customer from the portal as an agent in the agent interface and see what they look like and work them. So here in the portal We've uh, got lots of options uh, for branding with colors and logos and so on and so forth. There's an option here at the top for a banner message, which is a great place to let your customers know something important about an outage or an upcoming event. I've got one mocked up here about a voice service outage across our offices. And I'm even able to add a URL link here to some sort of document about that phone outage. That could be a link to another ticket or somewhere on your internet or a static PDF, uh, but those things are supported. In the center of the screen here, we've got some, again, configurable options. I've cleverly called my uh, service desk here my demo ITIL service desk, but obviously that would be you know, whatever makes sense in your environment. And I've included a statement here that you're able to raise a request from the options below. All of that is configurable. In the center of the screen here, we have a way to do the first thing that we talked about end users being able to do, customers being able to do from the portal. That's search knowledge. So if I come in as a customer and I'm having some network issues, I can begin to search on keywords, and the system will bring back knowledge base articles that match those keywords, and I can drill down into those and, and verify uh, solutions that I might be able to try that might prevent me from having to submit a new issue. We'll say that I wasn't able to find anything here on my, uh, in my knowledge base today that would help me. Um, so we'll need to proceed on with creating a request. And so at the bottom part of the screen, we have a, a list of our requests. Now down the left side, we have a list of the categories of requests. And then, oops, and then down the right side, we've got a list of those requests in that category. Now, one neat feature is that these categories are really just labels on these requests, which allows the same request to appear in multiple categories. So you'll notice that under common requests here, I've included a report a system problem. If I were to go to applications, I could see this exact same report a system problem uh, request type. So that allows you to, to construct your service catalog, service request catalog in a way that users find things, uh, uh, in a way that users are able to find things easily. So we're going to take a couple of scenarios today from the customer portal. The first, we're going to say that I'm having some sort of issue with the ADP payroll link on my company's intranet as a customer. And I'm logged into the portal here as my Jira Service Desk Customer 2, which is a very creatively named demo user. <laughs> you can see his little picture icon up here, the little circle with the face in it. So you can tell I'm logged in as this customer. And I'd like to submit an issue about not being able to access that ADP link. So I'm going to come and search for a request type to use. And we'll go ahead and use this report a system problem because this is a problem that I'm having. And we'll say that a ADP is down. Um, and you'll notice as I begin to type into the uh, request fields on this request, the system automatically also begins to try to find matching knowledge base articles that match keywords that I've entered. So if your user is uh, uh, unable to find anything when they search knowledge directly or skip searching knowledge directly, maybe we have one more opportunity here in the middle of submitting this issue to, to head this issue off at the past by providing some information that could deflect the issue, or possibly even a knowledge base article that would help me understand how to submit this issue and what to expect 
upon submission, things like that. So we'll say that I don't uh, have knowledge base articles here that solve my problem and I need to report this ADP being down. We'll say that I'm getting a 404 error. Now, I've decided to include, as an administrator of this system, these three different fields on this particular type of request. Now, these uh, the requests in your environment would be configured however makes sense for you in your environment. So I've decided to include a summary and a description and an attachment field, but these would be whatever fields make sense for the request that you're creating in your system. One thing I did want to show you here by adding this uh, attachment field to this type of request is a neat feature about these attachment fields in Jira Service Desk. We can drag and drop files here uh, as you can from many applications. And of course, I can browse out to my file system and select a file. But one neat feature is that I'm able to use my print screen function on my keyboard and then directly paste right into the attachment field without having to save the the image as an intermediate image file and then go find it, which is a great time saver for users. And you know, we're always asking, send me a screenshot, send me a screenshot. So this is a really easy way for customers to be able to do that. I don't actually need the screenshot on this particular request, so I'll go ahead and delete that, but I did want to show that to you. And now that I've filled out my request, I'm going to go ahead and click Create to submit my, my request. And when I do, you can see that I'm brought to a view of that request I've just submitted. So I can see my new ticket number here is 1399. I can see the subject I provided in my request, ADP is down, and, and the description I provided. And I'm also able at this point to comment on my request. If I maybe forgot information that I should have included or I need to come back and add some additional uh, data or feedback, I can do that in a comment, which will be uh, shown to the agent in the agent view of the issue as well. So maybe I'll say I need this ASAP uh, because I need to do my taxes. And I'll go ahead and click add to add that new comment. And you can see that the new comment appears here in the customer view as well as we'll see in the agent view a bit later. So now that we've submitted our first request, I want to come back and do one more request. And we've submitted this one as an incident type of request with an outage sort of problem. The other request type I want to do is more of a service request. So I'm going to come back to my portal and I'm going to choose to create a new request to onboard a new hire. We'll say that my user is a manager and he needs to bring a, a new hire on board. So I'll come down here to log in and accounts and I've got a new hire on board request here so I can open that up. And you'll notice here there's a lot more data points that are able to be filled in by the user for this type of request because in this type of request for a new hire onboarding, I've defined as an admin here in my demo system that I'm going to collect a good bit of information, name and job title and location and start date and what we need uh, on the computer and so on and so forth. To save us a little bit of time during our uh, session today, I went ahead and pulled up an, uh, a separate tab here with this request already filled out. So I'll select it now so you can see I'm creating a new request here for Jason Smith as an analyst here in Dallas. And I'll go ahead and scroll down and submit this request. I do want to note, though, that I said that I needed a laptop here as opposed to a desktop or, or not needing a uh, computing equipment at all. That's going to come in important a little bit later. I'll go ahead and click Create to create my new request. And again, I'm brought to a view of that request of all the information that I provided when I submitted the request. So we've now seen two of the three things that end users can do in the portal. The other thing that your customers can do in the portal, the third thing, is to find and update existing issues that they've submitted. So I do that with my Request button up here at the top of the screen. So we have an option here for My Requests and all requests. So um, Jira Service Desk is often uh, 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 includes customers that are grouped by organization rather than by individual. So with the latest release of Jira Service Desk, there's a new concept now of customer organizations, which has been added, uh, which allows for sharing an issue within the organization. So we now have two options in the portal to look at my own requests, or if the system has con been configured to do so, I can also look at a list of other requests for my organization.
So I'll choose to look at my request because we know we want to look at the ones I submitted. And we can see here the uh, new hire onboarding request that I just submitted. And by choosing that, I can get right back to the view of the issue I was on when I submitted it, where it would allow me to add comments and, and check on the status of the issue. Now you will notice that this request is a little bit different because it's more of a service request than a service outage type of request. And I've defined in my system that we need an approval for that. So as the end user in the portal, I can even tell that my request needs approval before it can move forward. I see a note here that it requires approval and I can even see who the, the approval is needed from. And just to be clear here, my username that the approval is needed from is department manager. That's not a role, that's a user's name. In my demo system, I have a user whose first name is department and last name is manager. So that's the person who's going to need to approve this new hire request here in my demo system because that's the way I've configured it. So I'd like to leave the portal for just a moment from the customer point of view and we'll toggle back over to the uh, to the to, uh, toggle over to my other browser here where I'm logged in where we were currently looking at an end user logged into the Firefox browser here into the customer portal but I have also got my Chrome browser here logged into the system as an agent so this is what we see when we log into the system as an agent so first when I log in as an agent I'm brought to my dashboard now a dashboard is just a collection of gadgets that can be configured to show visual representations of data in the system. There's uh, gadgets that do some two-dimensional filter statistics of a, uh, two columns against each other to do totals and counts. We've got one here that's able to uh, show me what percentage of my requests have come in from what source. I've got an activity stream here and pie charts and bar charts and heat maps. There's literally hundreds of different gadgets you can add and configure to a system dashboard to a dashboard. And then in your system you define a single dashboard as your system default but then you can have as many public and or private dashboards as you'd like. So a manager could create a dashboard for his group to use or an individual could create a customized dashboard for that individual to show exactly what he or she might need to see in the system. So there's a good deal of flexibility around that. And I wanted to show you too that any of the dashboards can be chosen to be viewed as a wallboard. So if I choose this view as a wallboard option, this puts the data in a format that it could be displayed, maybe on a monitor in a hallway or a conference room or in your tier one support room, something like that. And what the wallboard does is scroll through the gadgets on a dashboard for a few seconds for each of the uh, uh, gadgets that will fit on one page. And then it scrolls to the next section of gadgets. So you can scroll through and continue uh, scrolling through a series of gadgets uh, that will display current data in your system and, and help all of your users uh, who are able to see that monitor, for example, stay on top of what's going on. So we'll leave the wallboard functionality here and come back to my dashboard. And then when a user logs in, a agent, excuse me, logs in, um, after uh, coming to the dashboard, that agent chooses a project to work with. So I'm going to choose my ITIL service desk project that we'll be working out of today. And a project in JIRA service desk is really just a collection of issues that are handled in the same way. So you would have a project for maybe a, a software development project or a project for an IT service desk or maybe a business project for an HR or marketing uh, sort of use. Uh, you can have multiple different projects in your system. So when I come to a particular project, such as my ITIL service desk project here, I'm uh, brought to a left-hand nav bar that I can expand here to see the words that are related to the icons here. Um, once you get a good feel for what these are, you can leave that uh, collapsed to save some screen real estate, but you can exp uh, expand it to be able to see what's, what each of those icons mean. The first uh, is queues, which is what I'm brought to when I enter a, a project. And queues in Jira Service Desk are somewhat analogous to uh, queues probably in many uh, Service Desk type applications. Uh, however, in most Service Desk applications, queues equal tickets assigned to a team, period. 
so we have different queues that are that are uh, different uh, buckets of tickets assigned to different teams. We can certainly do that in Jira Service Desk, but the advantage of queues in Jira Service Desk is that ultimately they are just the criteria put against all the issues in the project to get you down to a list that makes some sense for some reason. So I do have a queue that represents a team. Here's my service desk team and my problem management team and my change management team queue. But I've also got queues for just everything that's open or uh, all issues in my system or things that have been resolved in the last seven days. I might have a queue for VIP tickets or critical priority tickets or or something like that. Ultimately, queues give you a very flexible way to slice and dice through the work to be done in your service desk to be able to get you to what uh, the work that needs to be done easily and quickly. So I wanted to show you before we find uh, a couple of those couple of uh, issues that we submitted as a customer from the portal. I wanted to just show you creating a ticket directly from the Jira Service Desk agent interface. So to create a ticket from the agent interface, I just click my Create button. And when I do, I'm uh, brought with a screen here that lets me choose a project that I'm working in and an issue type. And we're going to submit an incident here today from the service desk. And I wanted to show you a little bit of template functionality that can be added to your Jira service desk to allow me to define some issue templates that are preset values for issues. So I'm going to choose my network password reset issue template here. And when I do, that's going to populate my summary and excuse me, my summary and my description and uh, my priority and my reported source and so on and so forth, because that's the way that template has been defined. So I will go ahead and change this to my Jira Service Desk 2 customer here so we can show that I'm using the same customers I use from the portal. And I've added a little bit of extra functionality to my system where I'm able to select a first call resolution button here as I enter a ticket. And we'll say that this was just a network password reset. So I've provided all the service I need to provide to my customer during this initial call. And all I really need to do as an agent now is log this ticket. So I've set up functionality in the system to be able to do that. So when I click Create here on this new issue, I get a pop-up that shows me a link to my new issue here. And when we navigate there, we'll see that because I chose that first call resolution button, I've got some workflow that's set up to automatically resolve my issue, which automatically resolved my SLAs. It automatically assigned it to me, and it automatically put in a comment here at the bottom that this was a first call resolution issue that was automatically resolved. So those are things that I've defined as an admin in this system as I set up my demo system. Uh, to be able to add some extra functionality there that I believe will be useful to my service desk folks. So I want to come to my queues now and find those issues that we submitted from the portal. So first one, I'm going to go find the uh, new hire onboarding one we submitted. And we see that that was automatically assigned to my service desk team. So it appears in my service desk queue. And I can open that issue up and view it. We see all the data that was provided by the end user here um, when he submitted the request. And we can see that we're waiting on an approval from the department manager. So notice that I don't have a workflow menu here between my more and my admin menu. And, and to be clear, the admin menu only shows up because I am an admin. You wouldn't see that if, if you were not an admin in the system. But I don't have any way because I don't have a workflow menu to be able to transition this issue. And that's because I'm waiting on an approval before I'm really allowed to do anything with this issue. So I'm going to toggle over to my customer portal interface one more time. And I want to log out as my Jira Service Desk 2 customer, but I want to log back in as my department manager user over in the portal to show you something here in the portal that approvers have. So my department manager is able to log into the portal just like my Jira Service Desk 2 customer was. But when he looks at requests in the portal, he not only sees my requests and all requests for his organization, if that had been enabled, he's also able to see an approvals list if there are any approvals that have been assigned to him. So the approval users can come right here to their list of approvals and be able to review and approve or decline. Uh, different approvals in the system. So when I come to this request as an approver, I can see all the information that was provided 
by the uh, end user and I'm ready to approve or decline. I do have the option to comment here if I had maybe questions for my end user. I could converse back and forth between the person who submitted this ticket and the department manager who is approving in this, in this scenario. Um, but we'll say for now that I had all I needed and I'll go ahead and approve that request. And that'll change my status to approve and show that I have approved the request. So if I toggle back over to my agent interface now and just refresh real quick, you'll see that the system has automatically removed moved the ticket, the issue, to an approved status. It shows the department manager has approved here. And I now have a workflow menu which allows me to begin to take action on this issue now that it's been approved. So I want to note that when this issue came in, the user provided a, a good bit of information about what he needed that appears in the main body of the ticket. But I also, as an admin in the system, set up workflow on this particular type of request that automatically generated some subtasks for this new hire onboarding. So in my demo system, the first four tasks here are always generated to create the network account, a personal drive, and a voicemail, and update the staff directory. But in my system, these last two tasks for building out a PC and installing software were only created because in my request, I said I needed a laptop. So in that way, you can create subtasks on an is inbound issue for the different pieces that might need to be done to, to, res to resolve that issue. Uh, automatically in the system. And I've even gone so far as to assign each one of these down to a group and a user. So I'm able to, to drill down into this subtask and see that it automatically got assigned to my network team and to my Norman network user to, to generate this network account. So I will pretend that um, I'm going to take uh, responsibility, overall responsibility for this issue, and I'll go ahead and assign it to me. I'll pop back up to the main issue level here, and I will choose from my workflow menu to begin work. And in my system, I have defined that that's going to change me to in progress, and that's going to assign it to me. And because I moved to in progress, I uh, have met my SLA. So let's say a word about SLAs in the system. SLAs can be attached to any type of ticket in the system and defined uh, in, in uh, any manner you wish. I've defined here in my demo system two kinds of SLAs, one for time to resolution and one for time to acceptance. Now, I define my time to acceptance in this case as the time from the ticket creation until it moves to in progress. So me uh, taking uh, responsibility for this ticket and moving it into progress is what met my acceptance SLA. I've decided I've defined a resolution SLA for service requests of 24 hours. And you notice if I hover over the calendar, I, calendar icon, I can see that I'm working on a 9 to 5 clock here. So that 24 hours that I've given for resolution of a service request in my system really equates to three business days. So I want to go ahead, now that I've assigned this issue to myself, I want to let the customer know that I've got this and I'm beginning to work it. So I can come down here to my comments tab and, and begin to compose a update a, a comment that can be sent to my end user. I'm going to use a little piece of functionality that can be integrated with your Jira Service Desk system called Canned Responses that gives me some templates, much like the issue templates we used earlier, but these are templates for comments. So I've got one defined here to let the user know when I take a new issue that I've taken ownership and I'll be back with them. The system automatically populates the user's name after the word hi and it automatically populates the agent's name after the word thanks so that it's tailored for your particular situation. Now anytime I'm adding a comment to the system in Jira Service Desk, I have the option of commenting internally which only posts that comment to the agent view of the issue or I can share with the customer which posts it to the agent view, but also posts, posts it to the customer's view in the portal, as well as, if configured to do so, send the customer an email update with that comment. So I'll go ahead and share with customers so that I can let my customer know that I've got this and I'm working on it. And um, 
I wanted to show you here too that just like when users in the portal are uh, beginning to submit requests and are met with knowledge base article suggestions based on keywords that they type, similarly, agents in the system are presented with possible knowledge base related knowledge base articles based on the uh, text that has been included in the issue. So I've got one here that shows up on top for preparing a new hire. If this is a knowledge base article, I might want to send to any of my managers that are um, bringing new hires on board to tell them what to expect. I have the ability here to share this as a comment, and I can share that with my customer, and that will send a comment with a link to that knowledge base article so that the user can drill down on that and uh, look at what they can expect. So in this example, I say we submit the new hire request, and we need an approval. We'll contact you with any information we need, and when we're done, we'll let you know the new login information and stuff. So of course, this knowledge base article would be whatever makes sense in your environment, but the idea here is that I, uh, the system automatically uh, uh, suggests knowledge base articles uh, to the agents that might, might help them uh, in working the ticket. So I do want to show you one thing here about logging some work. Um, if I were to drill down into one of these subtasks, and as one of these uh, assignees on a subtask, if I wanted to log some work, we'll say maybe I spent an hour on this task, I can go ahead and log work on that. And you'll notice that under my work log tab, I see the uh, entry here for an hour that I spent, and I can see a, a logged time total for this subtask of one hour. If I pop back up into my main issue that that subtask is on, and maybe I want to log some work as the agent, maybe I spent two hours as the agent in addition to whatever is done on these subtasks, I can log that work on, on the uh, main issue as well. If I look at the work log here, I see this uh, new entry for two hours. But you can also see that over in my uh, sidebar that the three hours total has been rolled up that I spent on this issue so far. The two hours on the main issue and the extra hour that I added on the subtask. And I can see here that work has been done here on the subtask. So this is a great way to, to keep uh, an eye on how much time you're spending on each of these issues. So the last thing I want to do, we'll say that all these things have been completed. I just want to show you how to resolve a request. I'd come up here to my workflow, click Resolve, and provide a resolution. I have an option to spend uh, to log some more time here if I'd like, or to even add a comment to internally or to the customer. But I'll go ahead and resolve this issue now. And when I do, we'll see that I'm brought to a resolve state um, so that the uh, customer can get a notification that their issue has been resolved. So I'd like to pop back out to my queue one more time and find uh, the second request that we submitted. And we'll choose this ADP is down request. And the first thing I want to show you is that the SLA is different here on incidents than it was on service requests. On service requests, I said I had two hours to acceptance and 24 hours to resolution. For incidents, I've defined that as an hour and eight hours so that I really only have a business day to be able to resolve an incident. So I would begin to assign this to myself. Oops, I would begin to begin work on this, which automatically assigns it to myself and meets that in progress of the acceptance SLA. And I might pop down to some added functionality here that I have on a tab to show me similar issues. Now, I see that there are a bunch of ADP is down issues in my demo system here. So I believe that that indicates more of a problem than just an individual incident. It sounds like there's something bigger going on in my environment that might be causing these incidents. So I'm going to create a problem. To create a problem request, I simply come down from the more menu and create an issue. And instead of choosing an incident, I'll create a problem. And we'll go ahead and leave the... Uh, well, let's say that ADP not working on intranet. Let's say that. And I'll just be sure that this gets assigned to my problem team, and I'll click Create. And when I do, I get my pop-up with my new issue here. But I also get a link, a permanent link on my existing issue to this new issue. So that from 1399, I can navigate to 1408. And from 1408, I can navigate back to the original incident that created 1399. So that link is in both directions. I would then probably go ahead and link other issues here. Uh, that would be uh, related uh, to this. So maybe I want to search for things that have ADP and 
uh, oh, sorry, we'll do uh, text is like ADP, and we'll get a list of ADP. Maybe we'll just select a few of them here to uh, to add to this uh, request. And when I do, you can see that they are linked here now, in addition to the original request that I had. Now, it appears that I have accidentally I linked one that was already resolved, which doesn't make much sense, but that's what that strike through is for. So after uh, linking some of those issues and creating that problem, I wanted to do two things. I want to uh, figure out what the uh, root cause is of this issue, and also I wanted to be able to provide some uh, guidance on a workaround in the meantime before we can resolve it. And maybe as an agent, I don't know how to do that. So I wanted to show you an integration here with the HipChat IM chat solution from Atlassian called uh, HipChat. Uh, I can create a dedicated chat room through this integration. And then when I, uh, maybe I should slow down here so I can show you what I did. I had a button to either create a hip chat room or to add an existing one. And I, I created a new one. And when I did, I have a link here to that new knowledge, uh, that new chat room. So when I open that up, I'm in a new chat room and I can see that all of the updates now that would come into this issue would also get posted to this chat room. And people can watch this chat room and participate in it and be kept up to date on what's going on. It also gives me a way to uh, at mention different uh, members in the uh, in the uh, hip chat area and ask what's going on. So what do I do here? Maybe is what we want to ask Tommy, and Tommy can reply to that, and and I can have a discussion about where we are. So we'll say that we've determined with Tommy that what I have here is. The, the reason I can't access ADP on the internet is because I can't, uh, uh, that the ADP URL has changed, but we haven't updated that on our intranet. So I know that my resolve resolution for this is going to be updating our internet servers to this new URL, but also I could uh, put a knowledge base article out there with a workaround to go directly to the ADP uh, site in the meantime. So I can create a knowledge base article directly here from Jira Service Desk. I choose a template. We'll say this is troubleshooting and I'll click create. When I do, I'm brought to Confluence where I can begin to flesh out a knowledge base article related to this issue and go ahead and save it. You might wrap a, an approval process around this. In my demo system, I've said if an agent publishes a knowledge base article, it's immediately available, but you can put an approval process around this so knowledge is reviewed before it is exposed to customers. But I will show you that from the portal here, now if I were to search for ADP, I not only get that original ADP, how do I access it, but I get my new ADP not working on the internet uh, troubleshooting guide that might provide my uh, workaround for this in the meantime. So that way, hopefully, I can head new issues off at the pass. The next thing I want to do is create a change. Uh, actually, I want to go out and uh, find my servers that are involved in this. So I'm going to navigate out to my CMDB. My, uh, provided by Insight Asset Management. And we'll look at my servers, and I know that this is gonna be my internet A and B web servers here that are gonna be affected. So I will attach them to this problem ticket. And then we'll go ahead and create a change from this problem, much the way we created the problem from the incident, but this time I'll choose to create a change. And we'll say, I'll just leave everything else correct, uh, uh, the same there. And now I've got a new uh, change request that's been created on this problem. Beside the work for the status uh, field on any JIRA issue, you can look at the workflow related to a uh, ticket. And we'll notice in this one, I've, uh, workflow is really just a uh, collection of states that an issue can be in and possible transitions between them. So in this one, I'm going to come in for a, this particular uh, change request workflow with multiple approvals. I'm going to get a department manager approval, a CAD approval, and then I can begin working my issue. Now, you could put approvals anywhere you wanted in this process. I've just defined it this way in my system. So I'm going to pop back out. To, I'm going to show you here that I do need a, an approval from my department manager here before I can work on this issue. So I'm going to pop back out to my uh, 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 customer portal as my approver here real quick, and we'll go ahead and approve as the department manager. And you notice when I approve that, I now am waiting on an approval, my second tier of approval for my cab manager. So I'll go ahead and log out as my department manager and log back in as my cab user here, and we'll go ahead and approve this request as my cab user so that now my request over in my agent view is all approved and ready to begin work.
So I can see that my CAV user and my department user have approved. And I wanted to also notice that I have created this change to automatically create some subtask here to implement it. So the first thing I've defined as the step after approval is to plan my change where I would come out and select some dates that I want this to be done. We'll say I want this change Friday, it's in production, it's a, it's a upgrade, let's say, we'll make it a normal change. The earliest we can do it is tomorrow and we'll say it's risk level five. And I'll go ahead and plan this change so that it moves to a new status of planning in progress. And in my environment here, the next thing I want to do is review this uh, from a scheduling perspective to see when we're actually going to do this change. So my next step is to complete planning, and at that time I need to provide some scheduled dates. Well, this is a great place to come out and show you the ITIL forward schedule of changes I've configured for my system, supported by Confluence team calendars. And if I open that up, I can see a calendar view of the changes in my system. So I've shown in red here scheduled changes that haven't been completed, green uh, scheduled uh, actual changes that have been completed, and gray here are the requested changes that haven't been scheduled yet. So I can see this new one here for tomorrow, and I know we don't do changes like this on a Friday. We do them only on weekends. I've got something the following Saturday and the Saturday after that, but Saturday the 4th is clear, so I'm going to use that as my date. So we'll go ahead and complete – oops, I am afraid I just canceled this change. Well, that was unfortunate. Um, I would uh, have completed that change and then worked this on to resolution. I apologize for that. Um, in my system, I uh, don't have a way to uh, go back from uh, canceled, although I could have created that if I wanted to. But the idea here is I would have moved to my scheduled state, waiting implementation, then implementation in progress. Then I would follow the chain back to my change request now that my uh, pro uh, uh, back to my problem request now that my change has been completed so that I can work through the issues related to this problem, the incident, to make sure everything is resolved and go ahead and close out this uh, problem and the related issues with it. The system can also be uh, defined to uh, generate a, a survey for the users upon completion of, the, uh, of an issue. So under my reports here in my agent view, I can see reports on workload and my SLA goals and so on and so forth. And I can see I'm not doing great here on SLAs in my demo environment. But I can also see satisfaction reports here. So maybe I want to look at everything that's come in. And I can see the comment from the user. I can see the rating that came in. And I can even drill down into a particular issue to see what the problem might have been or maybe to communicate directly with that issue, uh, with that user about what the feedback was they left on that issue. So that's about all I had to show you today. Um, Let's uh, look and see what questions might have come in while we were going. Um, Dick, do we have anything? Oh, yeah, I know we we're do. And uh, close to the top of the hour here. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we are. Uh, but uh, great job, by the way. There, there's a Thank question you. that that came in, and let me see if I can find it here. As it says, uh, is there an automated way to populate the CMDB? I know you didn't really cover that today. Right? Yeah, yeah, there is. So okay. uh, the Insight, uh, Insight Asset Management add-on is what provides the CMDB functionality for Jira Service Desk. And you can go with that, uh, that piece of functionality on its own and either manually populate your CMDB, or if you already have discovery tools that are collecting that data, they can be imported into Insight Asset Management. Mm -hmm. But recently, Insight has also uh, provided a new uh, discovery tool called Insight Discovery that is able in an agent-less or agent-based manner to survey your network and populate your CMDB for you. So yeah, we've got that covered. Okay. A uh, related question is, uh, and I know you, you went through this. I think they asked the question before you did the demo. It says, what is the process for populating the knowledge base? I know you were showing uh, some of the knowledge articles. Mm-hmm. Right. So we've got a couple options there. Um, if you have knowledge elsewhere in another system or a SharePoint or some other knowledge base system or maybe even files somewhere in a directory, um, we can do imports from, uh, from uh, 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 Word documents and PDFs into uh, the knowledge base. Uh, we can uh, also let uh, knowledge base uh, our authors 
uh, create knowledge base articles directly in the knowledge base. And then as I mentioned, we can wrap uh, an approval process around that if you choose to uh, in Confluence so that only approved knowledge base articles can be accessed by your customers and service desk team. And you can even wrap an, an annual or some sort of periodic, maybe every six month review of all your knowledge base articles around that so you can keep the, the, the knowledge in your knowledge base fresh. Yeah, and I think you showed when you were typing in information, it would look to see if there was knowledge mm -hmm, out yep. there, right? Yeah, yep. I, I really like that. Several okay. places throughout this. Yeah, well. okay. Uh, next question here, and I, I think the, the answer I assume is probably yes, but it says, can approvals be processed via email? Yeah, isn't you, that what you showed? Yeah. Uh, well, we uh, showed doing that through the portal, um, but right. yeah, we are able to configure the system so that uh, approvers could respond to email uh, emails notifications about those uh, needed approvals, and they could respond with approve or decline, and the system can incorporate that email response and update the ticket accordingly. Okay. Uh, we also have a way for end users to interact with the system through email, uh, much like the way the users came into the portal submit it to submit a new issue. They could also email the uh, the email uh, uh, account, email inbox for your system, which would then be received by Jira and turned into an issue if the email did not contain an issue ID. And if the email did contain an existing issue ID, then that new email is posted as a comment to the existing issue instead of creating a new issue. Okay. Uh, here's, a, here's another question. I'm not sure if we need to get back to them or not, but it, it says, how would I s still run my daily stand-ups? Today we are running IT and Kanban boards. So I, I guess what that tells me, if they're not using JIRA software, they're probably using some other type of system, a DevOps system that has the, the, the Kanban and Agile, some sort of Agile methodology. Mm -hmm. So is, is, is Jira integrated then, or is your service yeah, you integrated? Yeah, mm -hmm. you bet. Yeah. Um, so all the Atlassian solution, uh, solutions in the suite are integrated, um, and Jira Service Desk, which provides the Service Desk functionality we looked at today, and Jira Software, which provides either Agile or, or Kanban boards uh, to manage software development projects, are really all on the very same platform, uh, just divided into different projects for different uses. Um, so they're not as much integrated as they are just on the exact same platform so uh, they're able to access each other and you're able to create tickets in one for the other and vice versa which is really okay. great and one thing I can show from that agile board if you do have Jira software installed you have board functionality in your system that you could even use in your service desk so I've got a mocked up ITIL service desk board here as a link I've added in my ITIL uh, agent view here and if I open that up I can see a board that could reflect the same information that's in those queues. So I've got an ITIL service desk board here and I can filter for things only assigned to me and see where we are. Or maybe I look at things for the service desk team. You know, I could come up with an individual board for my service desk team, but just as an example here, I've got some toggle switches to be able to show. Um, and just like with uh, software, uh, Jira software, uh, we could manage these issues by moving them uh, between columns in a Kanban board. So are yeah, you in, that's definitely yeah. an option. Are you in Jira software now, or is that, that was Jira a service? that was a Kanban board provided by Jira software functionality, but showing Jira service desk issues. You, okay. you do need Jira software on your yeah. system to have that functionality, but once it's present, you can use it for any issue in your system. Okay, and actually, the user just responded or and said he has he has a, a Jira software, so good. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have. I know we're option. we're kind of running late, but we're, there's one final question here, and is it the question is cloud on premise or or both? Um, actually, we have three different uh, options from Atlassian for uh, for uh, type uh, type of server. I guess is the way to say that. There is an Atlassian cloud version of Jira Service Desk that is hosted in the Atlassian cloud and provided by Atlassian. That is on a uh, monthly or annual subscription basis. There is a Jira server version that can be installed on prem at your location in your in your environment as a single Jira uh, Jira server, and that is a uh, a one-time perpetual server license that is purchased for your server and number of users, and then uh, annual maintenance on that. And then there's a uh, more robust version of Jira Server that also would be on-prem called Data Center, which provides redundancy and failover and 
and disaster recovery and those types of things for high availability needs in, in large enterprise type uh, situations. And that is an annual subscription model as well. But that would be on-premise, on so, right? That is on-prem. Yeah. That is on-prem. Okay. However, with either of the on-prem options, you do have the uh, option of choosing a third-party hosting provider if you want to if, – if for some reason the Atlassian cloud doesn't work for you for uh, some reason, you could still not have it on-prem and have the server or data center versions of the product hosted by a third party. Okay. And, and then here's one I, – I promised that was the last question, but here's, here's one more <laughs> sure. it says here. And, and it, can Jira software and Jira Service Desk coexist on the same server? You, know? you bet. And actually, okay. that's the recommendation. You could put them on different servers and build some stuff that would pass issues and uh, comments back and forth. But the preferred option when you are running both of the applications is to have them on the same server. Um, that way, users are able to freely move tickets back and forth between projects, even between a Service Desk project and a software project.